And we're back. Take two. Okay. <laughs> so we are here to talk about heredity. Um, a lot of information going on in this PowerPoint, so don't be afraid to pause us, rewind us, make sure you get sufficient notes down, and do not mute this. No, you have to listen to what we're saying because it's complicated stuff. Okay, here we go. It all started once upon a time with Gregor Mendel, an Austrian monk. And while he lived in the monastery, he was also a biologist. So he, he prayed a little bit. Pray a little and then plant it a little. And his, um, the organism he worked with mostly were pea plants, like the little vegetable. And through watching how pea plants reproduce, he was able to get the foundation of heredity, and he's known as the father of genetics. So here's kind of how he started. He decided he was going to cross different pea plants. One way that you can cross <coughs> pea plants is with purebred crossing. So you have two organisms that are identical to one another. So this is a common word that you would hear in dogs. So if you take a mama golden retriever and cross it with a daddy golden retriever, then you would get baby golden retrievers. And so purebreds mean that their whole family, their grandparents, their great grandparents, are all purebred golden retrievers. So they were never they never mated with a poodle or any other type of dog. They only have golden retriever genes throughout their family tree. Which is why like the purebreds are so expensive. Very it's because they're very rare to never have this like great, 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 great grandpa that was a Dalmatian. You know, mm -hmm. it was always golden retrievers. So back to the plants. The plants, oh, Gregor, Gregor used pea plants, like we said, and then he controlled their pollination. So in order to do this, he had to prevent them from self-pollinating. Because remember, some flowers can self-pollinate. So he collected those stamens so they couldn't self-pollinate. And then he took pollen from one flower and then just transferred it to another flower to, re to fertilize its egg. And in this situation, he was looks like he's controlling the color, the white versus the so-called pink here. Mm -hmm. And then he would check the offspring, plant these seeds, and see what comes up. So here's another scenario but with a different trait. This is now looking at height. So the P generation here is your starting parent. So he took a tall P plant and crossed it with a short P plant. Always short, always tall. Yep. So when he crossed those, then he had what's called the F1 generation. So that would be the children of the P generation. Yep. And what he found is that when he took a tall P plant and a short P plant and crossed them, he got children that were both tall. Right. So Where did the shortness go? The short disappeared. And it okay. didn't go medium, like some right. people think. Nope. The tall overtook the short. Well, then these children grew up and they had babies. So the F2 generation are the grandkids of the P generation. And what you'll notice in the F2 generation is that short characteristic Holy cow. pops back up. So Bam. that shows you that the short characteristic was never really gone it just was hidden by the tall trait and sometimes i hear people talking about well this trait skips a generation mm -hmm. and this is exactly what they're talking about that is possible the shortness skipped a generation and, and landed into the grandchildren yeah so keep in mind p is parent f1 is the first set of children f2 is the second set of children. so if your parents are both very tall but your grandparents were short and you are short that would be an example of it skipping a generation. Exactly. Okay, did I not press the button? It's not working. Oh, pressing the wrong button. Oh, <laughs> okay, here's two words that are kind of confusing. Um, you should already know the word chromosome from the Power Standard 4. We talked about chromosomes, but the chromosome is that structure, the coiled structure of the DNA. So these are um, a pair of chromosomes. And then on the chromosome, you have the genes. You've probably heard of genes themselves, G-E-N-E, -E, not the blue genes. But genes are what controls a trait. A trait is your hair color, your freckles, your skin color, the type of blood in your body. So for pea plants, in this illustration, the gene we're looking at is flower color. See, locus for flower color, location for the flower color gene. So there's, there's a location, and all around here are other genes for different parts different traits of the flower. Now, the one chromosome is carrying a allele, that means a different type of gene, an allele for purple. So this plant has the purple trait and it has a white allele. Mm -hmm. 
So when these two traits mix, then we'll find out what the what color the baby flower is going to end up being. Right. Okay. And this is like in humans, you might have heard that person doesn't have sickle cell anemia, but they are a carrier. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we say it like that. We are carriers for disease, but we don't have that disease. But if you're a carrier, your offspring could then develop that disease. Mm -hmm. So here's what Mendel kind of came up with. He figured that an organism's, organism's traits are controlled by pairs of alleles, which are the different forms, remember, of the gene, that inherits from his parents. It's not so random. Um, and then, so these traits, typically the what's called the dominant allele is then what shows up in the offspring. So if being tall is dominant to short, then being tall is going to show up in the babies. And they have okay. this hidden short gene. They're yes. just carriers for shortness. Exactly. So he actually developed, like he figured out all these traits for pea plants. So he has seed, seed shape, seed color, and then apparently there's a coat around peas. Mm -hmm. And he had, there's different colors of those. The pod shape, the pod color, the position of flowers, and the stem height. And the top row are all the dominant traits, and the bottom row are all the recessive. Now, I, I want to point something out. When I open a, a bag of frozen peas at home, 99, 99.99% of the time, they're green. I don't think we've eaten many yellow peas in my life, but green's recessive. So just because there's billions of green peas in the world, you can't assume that's dominant. Because once we introduce a yellow pea color, and when we reproduce those plants, that yellow will be dominant and will start taking over that field. Yep, so it's all about who the parents are and what they bring to the table that determines the traits. Okay, so now we're introducing something a little bit more complicated, and this will help you with the next video. Um, Mendel is hard to talk tall and short all the time, and those words get a little confuzzled. So he actually introduced some letters here. So capital letters always equal a dominant it trait. Kind of makes sense. Okay. And then your lowercase letters equal a recessive trait. So you have your dominant tall plant. And it's purebred. So right. both so of those alleles have to be two capital T's. And then you have a purebred short plant, which are two lowercase t's. When you take those two plants and then you breed them, what you're going to get in your offspring is one capital T and one lowercase t. Yeah, like this dad here, let's say this is the dad, he can only give his offspring one of these two t's, mm -hmm. and he knows it's going to be capital. The mama plant can only give a lowercase t. So That's since you know. the offspring has one capital T and one lowercase t, Remember, tall is dominant, so that tall T is going to cover up that lowercase T, so those baby plants are going to be tall. Right. Okay. But they're carriers for the short. Oh no, so what happens when they mix? So they're no longer purebred, they're mm -hmm. what's called hybrid right. T plants. So when those two then mix, you get your grandbabies, and here are the possibilities for what they could be for plants, and that's why your short plant pops back up. Because mm -hmm. if both parents give their lowercase t, then you have your short purebred plant back. Right. I do want you to draw this in your notebook and then, of course, write the words because it's going to help you out. Mm hmm Okay. So, again, the official definition of hybrid is an organism with two different alleles of a trait. So if it has a, tall, a, a capital letter and a short letter, that stand, that's a hybrid. And if you're wondering how we came up with, okay, well, how did you get a lowercase t and an uppercase t um, or a capital T? We, this is what's called a Punnett square on the screen. You guys are gonna learn how to do these and you are gonna practice video. with them, okay? So this is gonna be something that you become very familiar with and it's easy, so don't get overwhelmed. Easy peasy. Okay, turkeys, I think that's it. Yep, over and out, see ya. I think we, we can then stop.